Welcome to Atlanta Startup Village number 44. Woo! Yes, yes. This is the 44th one, and it's, uh, it's interesting because Atlanta Startup Village started with two specific entities that are presenting tonight. Uh, how many folks are here for the first Atlanta Startup Village? Nice, nice. So this is our 44th. We started back in 2012, and uh, two things that uh, brought us here are here tonight. One is uh, Techstars, Techstars Boulder. So myself, uh, the founder of Sales Loft, Kyle Porter, um, and some other friends went out to Boulder uh, back in 2012, and there was this amazing event out there called Boulder Denver New Tech Meetup, and that meetup brought basically entrepreneurs from all over and showcased the product. And we were like, wow, this is really cool. Let's do this in Atlanta. Uh, this is before this building, and so uh, we started at Hypopotamus. They're an eternal sponsor. Um, check them out if, you've, uh, if you want to get the latest news on all early stage happenings in Atlanta. And so uh, we came back and we started doing it and, and uh, you know, it was just a couple people and next thing you know we've got a meetup group of, of 9,000 so we're coming up on 9,000 so give everyone a round of applause for that. <laughs> and uh, we can't thank Techstars and, and just that whole community for uh, sparking this and uh, and of course sales loft for for going out there and being one of the first companies from Atlanta to go out there so it's really cool to see everything come full circle all right well let's get started on uh, we've got some wonderful sponsors tonight I see uh, some people are having some beers some some double fisting good work good work hey the price is right and uh, but the price is right because of the wonderful sponsors so Jackie of ATDC. There she is. Hey, Jackie. Oh, that was, that was good. <laughs> Jackie, please tell us about ATDC. Absolutely. It is our pleasure to pour beer tonight. Uh, my name is Jackie Chu. I am from ATDC. I will do my very best in the next two minutes to channel GM Jen Benet, who couldn't be here tonight, but she says hello. Uh, we are ATDC. We are Georgia's technology incubator based in Midtown, but we also serve the communities of Augusta, Athens, Savannah, and Peachtree Corners. And we're, we're really, really glad that we are able to do that. Um, I have a couple of announcements tonight to share with y'all. Uh, we are having a FinTech hack February 10th through the 12th. We'd love for you guys to come apply at atdc.org and come. Uh, there are, there's going to be $79,000 worth of prizes, 12000 of which would actually be cold, hard cash. Not bad for 54 hours or so, or a weekend. Uh, and it's going to be really fun because it's fintech and it's IoT. So those of you um, hardware sensor type people, this is going to be a lot of fun. Uh, let's see. Also, um, some of you asked about uh, ATDC and what we do. We help entrepreneurs learn, launch, scale, and succeed. If you want to learn more, come see us. Have some more beers. We're in there. And um, I'm hosting a Coffee with a Catalyst this Friday at 8 a.m. for you early risers. Come see me uh, in Midtown. That's it. Jackie and ATDC, thank you. Thank you for continuous sponsorship. All right. One of the first startups in Atlanta, Coca-Cola. Yeah. Yeah. Nice. Welcome. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, my name is Matt Garner. I'm with Coca-Cola. Uh, we are so happy to be here. Uh, we became a partner of Tech Village this year. And, um, you know, we would love to talk to you guys. If there's any way that we can help your business, uh, help your employees, y'all please come and talk to us. Let's see how we can partner together. And um, who knows a Coke product other than classic Coke? Monster, okay. Who else? This guy back here. Yeah. Give me something better. Look at that, going international. I like it. Awesome. Well, thank you guys. Y'all come talk to us and come get a beer. Thank you. And everyone gets a shirt. Everyone gets a shirt. No, I'm just kidding. I would love that. We would love that. 
and Pull Spark. For all the folks watching, Pull Spark, we can't uh, can't thank y'all enough for for coming in and and hosting uh, and giving access to all the people who don't want to uh, fight traffic. You can't blame them. Not at all. Hey, what's up, guys? Uh, my name is Doug. I'm the editor for Pull Spark. We are also a villager. Super happy to be here. Um, it was really cool to see so many first timers at Startup Village. Um, but if you're a villager or a visitor, um, we create videos. We would love to work with you guys, create promo spots, advertisements, product placement, whatever it is. Um, just come talk to me. I'll be right in the back next to Travis with the camera. Thanks. Thank you very much. All right, let's get to it. We've got four great presenters tonight. Uh, the first one's a little unorthodox just because um, they've got a product, but it's more uh, the organization. And, um, you know, I can't, uh, I can't express my uh, admiration for what these guys have done for the first Techstars cohort in Atlanta. I mean, for those that were at uh, the demo day in s November, right, November, really, really impressive. The companies, I know we've got some alumni already. Uh, in the building, but it's just an absolute wonderful addition to the community. So, Michael Tyler, take it away. Thank you. Nope. How many of you came out to Demo Day on November 1st? Oh, I was, my joke's not going to land if it's only that many. <laughs> that's the joke. The joke was, I don't need this. Oh, All right, there's bad, only two people joke. in the room who get that. Um, oh, well. Well, it's nice to be here tonight, everybody. John, thanks so much for the intro, and Atlanta Tech Village, thank you for the support. Um, I am Michael. This is my partner in crime, Tyler. Tyler, what do you have to say for yourself? That's Michael. <laughs> uh, we are uh, the leadership team of Techstars Atlanta. Um, so what is Techstars? How many of you guys know what Techstars is? Um, so tonight we're going to be talking about the Accelerator program, um, but Techstars is bigger than the Accelerator program. It's a global ecosystem. Uh, that helps entrepreneurs build great businesses from inspiration all the way to IPO. Uh, later this year, we'll be seeing the IPO of SendGrid, I believe, uh, one of the early Techstars companies, and there's a few more uh, coming up behind that. But um, So Techstars as an organization, uh, again, helps entrepreneurs, and we do that really through these three different programs. Um, startup programs, some of you may have, how many of you have been to a startup weekend or startup, startup week program somewhere? That's now part of Techstars. That's, that's one element of the, of the organization. Um, we have the accelerator programs that we're going to get a little bit deeper into tonight. And then there's also a $150 million Techstars Ventures Fund um, that, moving forward, uh, primarily invests in accelerator companies. Um, but today, we're really here to talk about the accelerator. Tyler, you want to? Yeah, so uh, the accelerator is uh, it's pretty incredible. Uh, not so much because of us, but because of the, the global effort that goes into it. Um, so, you know, TechStars has been around for 10 years now. Uh, we've, um, we've had about 900 companies come through the program. Those 900 companies, including, including some, of, some companies here in Atlanta, uh, have raised uh, over $3 billion in venture, in venture funding. And now I think, uh, you know, worth $7.5 billion or so. So there's, you know, massive amount of value created there, uh, literally thousands of founders, some of which are in the room right now. If you were in Techstars uh, Atlanta 2016, show us who you are. Raise your hand. Pat. Mishit, let's see your hand Mishit. back there. <laughs> There's one more. Yeah. Uh, so uh, in fact, there were, there were actually three companies last year from Atlanta um, uh, that uh, were part of the program, um, and uh, of course, seven others. And we can talk some more about, about those companies as we go forward. Um, so, you know, Michael mentioned um, some of the successes that, have, that, have, that, that, that we've had. Uh, you know, here are those names. Um, you guys probably recognize many of them. Um, I think the thing to point out about this is that, you know, Techstars is not about um, going from, uh, from, from idea to first customer. It's about going from early traction to scale, right? Uh, we, we are in the business of helping companies get really big really fast and go through all the growing pains that are associated with making that happen. Um, and so, uh, <clears throat> you know, and, and, and hopefully the result of that work, obviously not always, but occasionally uh, is massive uh, success. Um, and uh, yeah, 
And we are optimistic that we'll see some massive success from some of these companies, including our village friends here at Secure um, and some others on the list. So this was last year's class. Uh, we've got a few other folks in the room here that were, were part of the class. Maybe afterwards, if you guys want to talk to them, seek them out. Um, so why are we here tonight? We're here because our applications are open for the next Techstars class. Um, we'll talk about dates in just a moment, but we get the question quite a bit, you know, what do we look for in, in startups? And so uh, we look for really six things. Um, you know, the first three things are team, team, and team, right? That all the time. Um, you know, we're not looking or don't want to see teams that are coming together that just met at a co-founder dating session. We really want to see people that have, you know, worked with one another either in the, you know, in, in their current gig or last gig or have known each other for a long time. Um, but we spent a lot of time uh, really digging into the co-founding team, looking for a balance between technical skills, business skills. Um, Let me just add a point to that, yeah. Michael. So, you know, on, on this point, team, 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 um, people say, well, what does that really mean? And how do, you, how do you know if I'm the right person? And the way we think about the world is that we, we try our best, least to think about the world as, you know, for any given important problem, uh, you know, there are one or two or maybe three people in the world, right, who are the right people at the right time to start that business. Um, and so we start from that point, uh, seeking to prove that, like, in, in, our, in, our, in our mind, of course, right, that you are that person. Um, and so I would just encourage you guys as you, you know, think about tech stars or, 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 or more generally just starting a company um, that you believe can be, um, you know, a hyper growth startup, like, uh, why are you the right person? Why are you one of those one, two, or three people in the world for this particular problem, right? And so it kind of speaks to the authenticity of, of, the, of the story around you in this, in, this, in, this, in this problem. Yeah, the other criteria that we look for, we look for folks that are looking to solve problems in really big markets, um, you know, have clever ideas that, you know, are hopefully defensible. Um, and then we spend a lot of time talking to our founders about their progress, right? We don't talk, I don't like the word traction, we talk about progress. Um, and that, that's really defined by, you know, it's going to be different for every business, but it can be revenue, it could be eyeballs, you know, we don't, we don't know until we meet the business. But from the moment that we meet you in the application process, we're evaluating. And so we're looking to see how much progress you can make from the first time we're going to meet you in, the, in that application process all the way through to the time when an offer comes out. Um, you know, last year we had one individual who just iterated daily um, and kept us in the loop and we were super impressed with this guy's ability to just churn out and how fast he moved and that's why he made it into the class. We've got to, we've got to speed up, so uh, we're going to go a little bit faster here. Um, so so what's, what's the deal? How does this work? Uh, the short story is that um, uh, we offer an investment of $120,000. It's broken up as you can see here. Um, uh, it, for what amounts to uh, six to nine percent or so of equity in the company. Um, and, uh, you know, the, what I'll say about this quickly is that, um, you know, you should think of Techstars as a founder. I think there are three or four founders in this room now. Uh, ask them about their experience. Ask them how they feel about this. Uh, I think they'll all have quite positive uh, feedback for you. All right, we'll just skip this as far yeah. as what the program is. Here's the important dates, folks. Uh, the applications are open right now, and they will be closing the first week of April. Um, we will be going through about a five or six week evaluation period. We hope to have our offers out by mid to late May. Um, and then the program begins in July. And for those of you, that was most of you in the room who did not make it to demo day this past year, mark your calendars now for October 10th. Um, October 11th and 12th will be Venture Atlanta. We'll be kicking off the week with uh, Techstars Demo Day again. So, um, and then finally, if anybody's interested in being an associate at Techstars, um, last year we had four folks that were that came in, and we're really looking for not right out of school, young, you know. Uh, we're looking for people that are interested in maybe some job changes that have some skills and want to work with startups. Um, the Techstars Associate Program is a three-month gig, which is a perfect place for somebody looking to make a job change and work with startups. Come in, work for Techstars as an associate. You'll have exposure to 10 or 12 companies. Um, and uh, maybe after that, one of them will hire you. So with that, we'll go into Q&A. Any questions? Questions, guys? Hey, Tyler, I've got a question for you. Yeah. What if I have a business that's doing 100K in ARR? I think I'm 
too far along for Techstars. Do I, uh, is Techstars a good idea for me? Yes. Uh, we get, this is a common question. You know, I'm like, I'm doing great. I'm too big for you guys. We had a company last year go through Techstars, not in Atlanta, but in LA. They just closed a $25 million Series A. Uh, you know, many such examples. And I think, you know, part of the narrative here is that the companies that benefit most from a program like Techstars are the ones that are already doing the best, right? I mean, again, we're in the business of going from really good to, to great, right? Not from like, you know, just getting by to almost there because that's not worth much in venture. Yeah. Got a question back here? Do you have to quit your day job? Yes. 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 We are looking for full-time founders that are working on their business full-time. Um, question back here. One more time. Uh, if, 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 if Larry Page said, hey, I, I got an idea for, like, you know, it, whatever, I would say, that's awesome, come on in, right? Like, uh, if my little brother said that, I'd say no. Because, <laughs> you know, so it's like, it, it, again, it's about the founder, um, and, it, and, it's, and it's about uh, the authenticity of what you're trying to do, and it's about the market, and it's about all these things. So, and generally speaking, the answer is no, uh, but, you know, there are exceptional people all over the place, right? And so you might, you might be one of them, I don't know. Yeah. Uh, does, the team have to be local? does the team have to be local? No, we, uh, they, you have to come here. Last year we had six companies that were not from Georgia. We had four international companies, two from Tel Aviv, one from Europe, Belgium, Canada, LA, all over the world. So uh, no, but the teams do have to be here in Atlanta for the program. Yeah. Is there a certain age of the company? Is that the question? Uh, there's not a certain age, per se, if the company's been around for, you know, a few years and hasn't done much. Obviously, you know, we, we have questions about that, right? If the company's been around for a, a month, uh, we have questions about that, too. So I think, you know, it's like usually you, you kind of see companies that are, you know, six to, 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 to you know, a year or two old, but that, that's not, that by no means is the rule of thumb. It's all about, it's all about speed. Yes. We didn't disclose the number of applications, unfortunately, I can't tell you about that, but suffice to say there's a lot, a lot. Um, it's a competitive program. Yeah. Yeah. That means if you aren't happy, then we'll give you all of your equity back, period. Uh, you send a quick email, says I, I wasn't happy, and we say okay. <laughs> but, and, and the reason we didn't do that is because you know, it was like we're, we're, so, we're, so, we're so confident in, in what we do, right, that, that we were able to do that. Of the 900 or so companies that have gone through Techstars since its existence, about 10 years now, I think it's a handful that have requested that. Like three or four. Yeah. Yeah. There's a question right here. Yeah. Yeah, in the Atlanta program, uh, we are horizontal. We, we know what we are not looking for. Um, you know, uh, I guess we can, we can talk about that. Uh, I mean, we, but don't, we don't have a theme. We don't have a theme. Um, we, uh, there are things that Michael and I like, do not have uh, domain knowledge in or just don't like in some cases, and so <laughs> it doesn't make sense to pursue those things. Um, but again, I think at the stage of, uh, you know, of, of, of companies that come to Techstars, it's much more about um, the quality of the founders and the market than it is about us having any particular verticals. Although there are Techstars programs that do have verticals, as you're probably aware of but not here in Atlanta. Yes, sir. The core value add that we add. Yeah. Um, I think there's a couple of things. I think one, uh, the Techstars network is absolutely tremendous. For those founders in the room uh, who went through our program last year, they can all attest to that. Um, you know, we've got now, I think, about 7,000 people in the network that makes up mentors, former founders, employees of those companies. We, everybody inside that Techstars network stays connected via an internal application. Um, that's kind of like a Quora meets LinkedIn for anybody that goes through the program. Um, it, huge network. I'd say that's one. Um, two, we are, at the end of the program, focused on helping companies raise capital. Um, you know, when we got out of demo day, we had three companies that decided they were going to raise at that point in time. All three of them were successful. There's three more that are going out for their rounds probably this quarter. I think they will be successful. And I think we're out of time. I mean, shut up. Uh, one, more, one more thing you get, you know, is you get, you get, you get, you get us, right? And you get the, 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 
well, you get us, in addition to all other things Michael said. And, and, and that's a lot. And Look at just, these faces. No, for example, <laughs> Pat Powell. Where's Pat Powell? Pat Powell is one of our founders. Pat and I just spent an hour and a half together, right? Like, I, 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 I know Pat intimately. I know his business intimately. And we will be, you know, co-founders with him for life. <laughs> Thank, sure you 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 Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Meal delivery. Huge, huge asset to the community. And uh, I can tell you, just going from Techstars Boulder, the, uh, the biggest asset are, are just the people, 100%. So, all right. One of my favorite things about... Um, Getting together at Atlanta Startup Village is that we've got volunteers who come in and help. And, you know, these seats didn't automatically just uh, lay out perfectly in this formation, and they sure as heck don't organize by themselves. And the volunteers here, uh, they get to pitch 30 seconds of anything they want. And I, I love this. So uh, the first one we've got, Sunil of Object Frontier, please come take the mic and 30 seconds. Under pressure here, 30 seconds. Um, so who am I? I am, I am a director at Object Frontier. Uh, we're headquartered in uh, Alpharetta, Georgia. Um, so we handle uh, product management, development, QA, data, data analytics, and so on uh, for leading companies such as Cisco, CNN, Partners Health, and so on. What we're trying to do here is uh, we're coming up with a demo of real-time data analytics in the cloud using Smack Stack, that's uh, Spark, Mesos, Akka, Cassandra, and Kafka. And you're going to learn how to identify application areas for Smack Stack, build data streaming and machine learning predictability analytics. Uh, where is this? This is, uh, we're done? <laughs> um, this, this is um, at Stats Food and Drinks, and um, it, you know, it's on the wall. Just, just go ahead and, and pick it up from there. Thanks. Thank you, Sunil. On the wall, demo, stats. What was the date? February? Okay, great. Great. Adi. Man, you are wonderful. You are wonderful. Adi is a uh, former presenter and numerous, numerous volunteers, so thank you. Thank you so much. So I'm going to do something totally different today. I know typically I say, hey, download Mixel and connect and all that good stuff. So. Tonight, I'm just going to tell you what I've used Mixco for. So I've actually connected with David and Amando and Phil. So if you're looking to better network, download Mixo, check it, and instantly connect with someone here looking to do the same thing. We just added our group chat feature. That means everybody that checks in tonight to Atlanta Tech Village, you're automatically added to the group chat where you can continue the conversation here and after the event. Thank you so much. Thank you, Adam. <clears throat> Natasha, hey, come on down. You're the next contestant. Thank you. What did I win? <laughs> 30 seconds. <laughs> Hi, everybody. Good evening. <laughs> my name is Natasha, and I'm here with my colleague, Zach. We're representing Chase Professional Staffing. We are a white glove, full service staffing and recruiting firm. We've been in business for over 30 years, and we're headquartered here in Atlanta. We're here representing our IT division, so we'll help with those technical and functional roles within the IT space. Whether you're looking for a contract for those projects, contract to hire, direct placement, um, or even payroll services, we're here to collaborate with you in 2017. Our information is in bubble letters on the back wall, so look for us. Have a good night. Thank you very much. Locate your care. Take it away. Good evening. Uh, so it's my first time in the village, and uh, I appreciate the opportunity to uh, talk to you guys about the company. Uh, two of my buddies from uh, business school, we started about a year ago. So uh, Locate Your Care is a company based in Atlanta. We incorporated in April of uh, 2016, and we're trying to bring the on-demand economy to healthcare. And uh, just a few slides, and um, I'd love to, uh, to show actually the product, which has got me excited about uh, this opportunity today. Um, everyone knows healthcare is massively inefficient. And we're talking about how do we best uh, give people access to care. Um, we have the patient 
payer and provider, and uh, usually this triangle is massively inefficient. The payer is the ones uh, that, that insert themselves trying to help people. And uh, we, uh, our, our platform, our uh, offering, uh, takes a different hypothesis on this. Can we leverage modern technology to connect patients and providers directly without the um, inclusion, without the, uh, of uh, having to deal with insurance? So this is cash only platform directly connecting patients and providers. Uh, the reason why um, the technology has been so successful right now, just in a couple months of existence, we have solid traction only in Atlanta is uh, because we're being transparent in pricing, solves a big problem in healthcare. Um, it's uh, the rates are negotiated because we're paying cash and our providers get a reimburse the same day. And uh, it gets the problem of, of navigating healthcare, uh, which uh, a lot of people with high deductible healthcare, which is about a third of you guys, and the people with no insurance face. Uh, furthermore, if you're trying to find a new kind of provider today, this is your typical way of doing it. You either talk to your buddies uh, for uh, recommendations or you post it on Facebook and you spend about three hours uh, trying to get a booking with a provider that you trust. We collapse this model and with our platform in, in four clicks you are uh, booking scheduled and seeing a doctor that's trusted, accredited, recommended by people like you um, and you do that in real time when and where you want to. So um, for you guys, after I'm done with the demo, Download our free app, and uh, if you sign up tonight, we'll email you a code for a uh, free massage. Uh, massage, if you guys are joking, it's, uh, it's a healthcare. 97% of people that do massages are doing it because of pain and not because of pampering. So uh, let, me, uh, let me go into the demo itself. So um, healthcare is, is a big industry. It's about uh, $4 trillion. Um, having to touch all kinds of healthcare problems with us, it would be like eating an elephant with one spoon. That's not what we do. You do have to try you know, one spoon at a time. That's why we're trying our play with elective and semi-elective care. And within those, we've selected dentistry, chiropractic, and massage. About 50% of the payments in dentistry and massage are cash payments, so it lends really well to our model. And then massage is about 98% cash. So um, it's, it's, it's a very simple uh, UI. Um, somebody will download the app, and uh, I'll just go through each one of them to, to give you a feel of how this works. Uh, there are two different apps on, the, on, on this uh, ecosystem, on, on this uh, marketplace. We have the consumer app, and we also have the provider app. They both have different user experiences for different groups. So I've signed up as a dentist on, uh, on the provider. And uh, we'll, we'll show you what the, what the app looks like on, um, on the consumer side. For example, you want a chiropractor. This is what's interesting is that uh, you can see the different uh, what we call services that, that you can select. Uh, you see the time it takes. So that's a transparency in service and, and your anticipation of how long you're going to be there. You also see the price. This price is cheaper uh, than, than what you get for this kind of service in Atlanta. Um, and then the pricing is market-based currently, and we're moving to dynamic pricing. And you also, this is the biggest uh, uh, change or disruption that people see. Right now, when you want to see any kind of doctor, it's, you have to make yourself uh, uh, available to when they're scheduled. But uh, this is when and where you want it. So let's do a dentist one. Uh, let's do an uh, urgent dental exam or examine cleaning with x-ray. It costs $180. Let's do it for Thursday at 8.45. I want to book my visit, it automatically finds the address of where you are. You say, no, that's not where I want to see a dentist. I want it close to home. Say 133 Peachtree Street Northeast, or uh, let me do my home, which is, yeah, that's, that's the same thing. Uh, you continue. Keep going, keep going. All right, thank you. Um, and so you get a chance to you know, change your payment method. Uh, you enter the credit card information here or the one that's saved, but it's not charged until uh, you've completed the, uh, the, uh, whatever the, uh, the service you're choosing is. So it says, uh, you know, pay with uh, credit card. Uh, right now, I, um, this is generating a ping. It's encrypting the data. We have to be HIPAA compliant. We have to ensure that this is the safest information that we can cross uh, to our providers. 
So this is a notification that I'm, I'm signed as a provider and they see that. So right now my, my ping is pending. You'll notice I did not select a provider, which is what users are, are uh, doing today. You like to see faces, you like to see what the provider looks like, their rating. You have to trust us that we've done this for you. They're accredited, we've checked through multiple sources, there are five star uh, providers, and we've onboarded them on the platform. So I tell you, Mr. So-and-so, give me your preferences. I'll make that provider show up on the time and the place that you want. So go into the provider app. Uh, it's, I'm a repeat patient because I was testing this earlier. It says, Fatan wants to be seen on 2-2 at 845, and that's a revenue to you. That's cash revenue to the provider. All they have to do is book it, and this automatically goes into their appointment screen. And I was notified, that's a notification at the top on my consumer app. I go in there. Now that I've been matched with a provider, I get to see all kinds of information about him. From the rating, any provider notes to me, um, you know, I get directions, I can call them directly. And so um, this is, um, that's when you know all the information about them. Um, just show you, once you've seen the provider, again, it's really easy for them. They can mark you as treated, no show or cancel. Mark is treated, and then you go in the history here where the provider can see, uh, they can manage the patient flow and the payment for you. On the consumer side, Were notified, you were notified, so you get the rate that you're experienced. So we do, um, we do, uh, do a lot to get a high, uh, top rated providers as a baseline to be onboarded on the platform. But we let the community do the, the ongoing management of quality of the platform through the ratings and reviews. So um, that's, that's a demo. Uh, can I go and QA? Wonderful. Questions? Let's give them a round of applause. Very nice. Quite a product you got there. What? Is there an uh, currently, there is no Android version of the app. Uh, only iOS. We'll be doing that in the next couple months. So yeah, you, you can download the free app in the Apple Store, but that's excluding a few people. What? I'm sorry. What kind of payment? I, I mean, you can do Apple Pay, credit card, um, any, any kind of payment that um, you use at a store. Uh, you, you just do it to, as a part of your profile. That's not being charged until you've actually seen the provider. Uh, go ahead. Uh, no, right now it's cash only. Uh, health, uh, in, we're not allergic to insurance, but that's something we would tackle later on. Go ahead. Great question, says what if the provider doesn't show up? Uh, let me clarify something. On demand, provider doesn't come to your house. You go to their store, their clinic, their professional setting. Uh, so on, there's different firms that do on demand where a doctor comes to your house. On demand, you do telemedicine with them. This is on demand where you go to the doctor, but you are uh, specifying when and where. You see the transparent pricing and service. And then when you're matched with the provider, you can cancel if you know, things happen, life happens. Go ahead. Uh, a percentage cut for each transaction, and that ranges whether it's a first visit or an ongoing visit and uh, that kind of service. Uh, right now, yes, yeah, the app is free for users and doctors on both sides. Go ahead. Yeah, great question. It's like, how do I ensure that I want to go back to a provider that I liked? Uh, we actually encourage that professional relationship between provider and, and uh, consumer. You can go to your appointment screen and, uh, and you'll see your history and you can rebook them directly. That request, that ping doesn't go to the overall market. It goes just to that doctor and you, you talk back and forth until you find the time that it works. Go ahead. The provider is, uh, the question is, is there motivation for the provider to bypass the system? Um, but sure, we, uh, they're not lifting a finger to get a cash paying customer through our platform. And they're using this for scheduling, billing, which is uh, cheaper than any alternative they have today. Locate your care, you're gonna be around? 
I'm going to be around. Wonderful. Thank you. Well done. Very well done. Wonderful. Robbie? Robbie. Chris with the Robbie Group. Excuse me. Sorry. How are you? Good to see you. You doing well? Yes, sir. Good. Thank you. Hi, guys. Did you know that every year more than 350 Fortune 500 companies pay no income taxes? And why is that? It's because they have access to resources and knowledge that allow them to do so. So what if small businesses and, small, and startups had access to the same resources and knowledge to achieve similar tax savings? And now they can with the Robbie Group. My name's Chris Mitchell. I'm with the Robbie Group. Come back and see us in the back. Um, our information's on the board, or you can go to the Robbie Group if you can't come see us. Robbie Group is spelled uh, R-O-B-B-Y, therobbiegroup.com. Thanks, guys. Thank you very much. Pitch is getting good. Getting good. A couple months ago, when this crisp. Come on down. It's good. Hey, how are you? Scott? Scott yes. yes. How you doing? I'm doing well. Yourself? I'm ready. I'm doing you ready? Doing you sure? 30 seconds? 30 is this second. your first time? Second. Second time? All right. First since August. Yeah. Good evening, everyone. Uh, I'm going to read so I can get through this quickly. Uh, my name is Dr. Scott Speed, and I'm a former public school teacher, founder of a mobile app concept that's under development, and a founder of a nonprofit education startup called Grow. And I have a few questions for you to consider. What if schools were in co-working spaces like ATV and we treated the students like startups? What if we incubated students, allowing their natural abilities to grow organically instead of educating them? What if we allowed them to tinker, fail fast, and iterate while pursuing their innate interests and passions? What if the adults in this space provided mentorship, classes, resources, and helped them make connections? A successful exit would be arriving at 18 years old, ready for college, a career track, or entrepreneurship, equipped with the knowledge of what it is they are truly meant to do in life. That's what we're building, and we are looking for entrepreneurs and teleworkers who are interested in co-working with us in the South Fulton County area and lending their talent to reimagining education as we now know it. If that is you, please visit igotogrow.com to join our meetup. Our info is on the back wall. Thanks. Very nice. Very nice. I can't cut that mission short. Wonderful. Wonderful. All right. Scrub Bay, take it away. Check. Check. Okay. I'm Justin Grant, and this is Israel. We're with Scrub Pay, pain free patient payments. And let me start by taking a little survey. How many of you have seen a doctor in the last 12 months? Raise your hand. Okay, pretty good. You better have. But, um, so many of you have probably had a similar scenario to what I experienced last night, which is this is a medical bill I pulled out of my mailbox. Now, this is also a strongly worded statement that is my final notice. It's also my first notice. <laughs> I have not, I've gotten zero correspondence since my appointment on the 7th of October. So these medical statements are pretty frustrating in general. Uh, trying to read them, trying to, I guess, decrypt what they mean, what they say, um, who they're from many times. There could be different groups. Um, really, I've seen this frustration on both sides, not only as a patient, uh, like many of you, but also as a revenue cycle professional in the hospital world. I've worked for over nine years in the revenue cycle world, and I've seen many different CFOs uh, become very, very frustrated with their patients not paying their medical bills. And they say, well, why aren't they paying? Well, there's not a simple and easy way to pay. So let's run over the numbers. There are 5,200 hospitals in the US. There's $74 billion that will change hands from patients to hospitals just in 2017. That means, on average, we've calculated, and many of the management consultants agree with us, that there's a revenue shortfall of around $14 million per hospital just in 2017. So if you're thinking about Piedmont, 
you have seven hospitals, that's a $98 million shortfall in revenue just because they don't provide a simple and easy way for the patients to pay. That begs the question, where's the app? So we made the app, enter ScrubPay. ScrubPay is an application that makes it simple and easy for patients to pay their medical bill via text message and email. I'm gonna cue the video. And I'm on time. Don't screw it up. Welcome to your sneak peek at ScrubPay Painless Patient Payments. You can see the patient will receive a text message appointment reminder with a smart link. The patient's cell phone number is automatically populated through the smart link and the patient will agree to the terms of use and privacy policy and then be asked to create an account. Once the patient has created an account, they will be presented with their balance from the medical visit. The patient will then be prompted to enter a credit card. ScrubPay offers the ability to take a picture of a credit card through the phone's camera. We also offer the ability to autofill a credit card for convenience. Once the payment method is entered, it will default to the preferred payment method for future balances. ScrubPay does not store any credit card information and all information is encrypted and is level 1 PCI compliant. On the balance screen, the patient has the ability to make a partial payment followed by a success screen to know the payment went through. The remaining balance can be seen back on the balance screen where the patient will pay the remaining $100 simply and easily by clicking the Pay Now button. By touching the menu navigation, the patient can edit profile information, view sites of service, pay remaining balances, edit payment methods, or sign out. If you are interested in increasing friendly patient payments via the ScrubPay Patient Payment mobile app, please visit She did a much better job than I would have. <laughs> so, Do you want to go to questions or was that one last? <laughs> okay. So basically, we give patients a simple, easy way to pay their medical bills. You're not having to go to your mailbox now. Uh, we're increasing the hospital's bottom line, which increases the health of the hospital. Um, you'll get better care because you are paying your medical bills and you, you'll also probably feel better because the management of your healthcare expenses is all in one place. Anyway. Sure. We do. We're in private beta clients right now, testing it out, and uh, we should have results on those here shortly. So. Do we have any clients? All right. Yes. How do you know if the bill is accurate? So we take the file, it's a subset of the file um, that comes from what would normally go out as a patient statement. So if they've scrubbed that and it drops to patient responsibility, that's what we get. How do we make money? We make money as a percentage of collections. So we have an administrative fee until we get to where they were last year, year over year, and then we tiered it. So on their return on investment, we increase that. Yep. So are you guys uh, collecting uh, payments for actual medical collections? Uh, so collections? Are we collecting payments that are actually set into collections? No. Uh, we are, 
viewed as an extension of the hospital's billing office uh, and, and really a tool to help the hospital increase their revenue. Yep. I'm sorry? All the hospitals or just Atlanta? Right now, we've only done Atlanta. We're looking to get a model that's rinse and repeat, and then we'll, we'll scale out to the rest of the US. So the question was, do we offer a way to uh, view the insurance information? And the, the answer right now is not yet. We're working on a chat bot that will be able to uh, receive questions and be able to answer your questions on your medical bills. We're also working on a text message notification when your bill has dropped to insurance and when your insurance has been successfully adjudicated so I'd, that you know that that's truly your balance. I'd also, I'd also say that uh, on the proof of concepts we're doing, the average bill has been around $314. Very finite. Right, so the question was, <laughs> yeah. what happens if you don't pay your medical bills? Yeah, we'll spam It'll you still go it. to collections. <laughs> <laughs> We're not an excuse. Yeah. <laughs> They're still going to collections. They just still don't pay. Yeah, <laughs> We're, and, and we under, correct, yeah. We understand there are folks out there who won't pay or cannot pay. And, and we're, we understand that there's a percentage of those folks that are never going to pay. And we still want them to have medical care. We want the folks that can pay and will pay to have a simple and easy way to pay. And we'll increase revenue that way. Hey, Brian, how are you? Good to see you. Doing, doing great, thanks. Hey, everybody, as a business owner or as an individual, if you could pick up the phone and call your attorney, ask him any question you want, talk as long as you want, and not get an invoice, would you do it? With Legal Shield, you can do that and a whole lot more. And if you're an employer competing for talent, but you can't do it with payroll dollars, you'll want to know about our employee benefit package, too. I'll be in the back of the room with a smile on my face. Come talk to me. Heck yeah, Brian. I think you got a, uh, another career in, in you if, you've, uh, if you want to get on some good, good uh, late night selling. I love it. All right, Sales Loft. This is uh, where, where we started. And we've got Allie, head of product, and some of the other lofters in the building. Allie, take it away. Thanks, guys. Um, so unfortunately, I'm not head of product. I am a product manager at SalesLoft, and I know that that means you guys are all wondering why a lowly product manager is up here. And it's because I love Atlanta. I love the startup and tech scene here. I love Atlanta Tech Village, and I love SalesLoft. I'm kind of the resident cheerleader there. Um, so we're not a startup anymore, I've been told, that we don't get to call ourselves that. We started at ATV, and we graduated and moved next door. So we went from... I think when we were here, we had 50 employees, and now we have 130. And so I'm going to show you guys a little bit about us and a couple of the new features we have coming out. I know we've got a couple of sales loft clients in the house, so please catch up with me after. So sales loft, we are the modern sales engagement platform. Um, what does that mean? It means that we turn sales teams into efficient, effective, and successful modern sales organizations. Basically, we help you convert target accounts into customer accounts. We do these in this lovely slick 
slide from my marketing team, and they sent me out here with this, and I was like, you know what, really let's talk about what we do. We take all the admin work sales teams go through um, from making emails, phone calls, things like that. We help make it more efficient and effective, and then we log it into salesforce.com for you so you never have to do that. But we weren't always the modern sales engagement platform. Instead, we started uh, in November 2011 with Kyle Porter, our CEO, and some backing from David Cummings, who I'm sure everybody in this room has heard of. Um, a couple of years in, he realizes that maybe the company wasn't going quite the direction he wanted it to, and he rebooted it. So basically, as he likes to say, we failed fast, learned from it, and he brought on our co-founder, Rob Foreman, in January 2013. And we started with more of a focus on things like core values and respect between product and sales. And then we moved on. We got some rounds of funding, um, which were awesome, and included David Cummings again. And most recently, we had a round of funding that you guys may have heard of. We had a 15 million Series B, primarily led by David Cummings. Um, he volunteered $10 million of his own money because he wanted to keep sales loft in the city. He wanted to help Atlanta, and that's part of our mission too. We want to help other startups here. We put a lot of backing into the community, culture, and all of the core values that Atlanta Tech Village and the rest of the um, tech scene in Atlanta stands for. So... With that being said, now you know what we do. Let me tell you how we do it. So I'm gonna move over to a live demo, which hopefully will work, unlike my microphone. All right. So I am moving into my sales off product here. And for those of you who used to be prospector clients, that is actually a successful product that we sunset and moved most of our focus onto Cadence, which is now called Sales Loft. So what we have is a dashboard that gives you a live feed of what's happening. So people who have viewed your emails, you can see what's going on and you can see people that you need to reach out to. You also get some reminders. You can send emails, you can make phone calls, you can log all of this into Salesforce from inside Sales Loft. But that's not the fancy part anymore. So previously, if you were doing anything inside Sales Loft, you had to be in here to see the history helps if I click it properly. Technical difficulties. I'll talk to the product people about that. So here's Kayla. You can see her activity. You can see all of the cadences she's on. You can see calls. You can see emails. You can see how many times she's open, clicked, replied. You can also see what stage she's in, if she has tags, and if she's marked do not contact. So previously, you were in your Gmail sending a reply to Kayla, and in order to see this information, you had to open up sales off too. And we decided that wasn't cool. So now you can actually pop out this little side bracket here. And now you're looking at Kayla's email and all of Kayla's information inside SalesOft in your sidebar. And you can take action here. You can change her stage. You can see her cadences, her activities, and even log notes from here. Additionally, and this is a big one for people, you can mark her as success, which is really cool. So this is our, one of our new products, It just or one of our new features, just rolled out on Friday. So basically we're trying to streamline the experience and get everything into one product for you guys. Likewise, we also added some fanciness to our Salesforce dialer. So previously when you clicked call, you just see this little screen, you don't have any information. This is me, I'm gonna call myself, I'm clearly a hot prospect. So now you can actually see a bit more information about the person and once I've clicked call and it connects, you can actually see that you can drop your voicemail, mute it, or, and you can't see this yet because Wi-Fi at ATV is fantastic, if your Wi-Fi connection is bad, we will actually give you an alert and tell you, hey, your Wi-Fi connection is unstable. It's not sales off, it's not sales force. Go check your Wi-Fi connection. And a couple of other different things so that you can take action on exactly what's going wrong in your call and fix it for the next time around. You can also log your call notes straight from here. And we have these lovely things called disposition and sentiment. So you know what happened during your call and what kind of fit it was. You can, again, log from success here as well. And the fancy part is that now, while this previously lived inside Salesforce, you can also now build it inside anywhere, assuming that this works, which my engineers assured me would. So I'm resetting my dialer over here. And now I've got Kayla. 
pulling her information from inside Sales Loft. I can see her email, I can see her number, and I can actually make that call and log notes just like you saw before. That's it. Wow. John's saying wow because he saw the before. So this is the Sales Loft team. What questions can I answer for you guys? Yes, sir. He asked, do you have to have Salesforce? Now the answer is no. Um, you can actually function outside of Sales Loft and out of your Gmail, but the big benefit to Sales Loft is actually if you have Salesforce, because a lot of the admin work that goes into it that sales reps are doing that take time away from their daily jobs is happening inside Salesforce. Anyone else? Yes, sir. How much is it? He asked how much it is. We have tiered pricing models. They are on our product page, uh, depending on how many uh, team members and what tier you get. So we have group, professional, uh, we have group professional and enterprise. Um, typically, an average pricing is about $100 a seat. Anyone else? Uh, per month, yes. I would like to think I blew you all away and you don't have any questions. If you think of some after, please come find me. Anyone else? All right, fantastic. Thank you guys for having us. Wonderful. Well done, well done. All right, we've had four companies present, and uh, hopefully there's still some beer left. I do want to make a quick announcement. So with the 44th uh, Atlanta Startup Village, uh, we are in good hands. We have, uh, you know, the startup community is not one person, not one company. And um, so I'm excited uh, to announce with Wide Angle continuing to grow and bring on folks that this will be my last one I host. But this will not be the last one, of course, because we've got the meetup, we've got all of the wonderful people at the ATV, but this will be my last one presenting and emceeing. So uh, I will miss y'all, but I will still be around and building wide angle. Uh, we're just, the demands are too much, but uh, you will be in good hands because we're putting the right people in place. So give yourself a round of applause and give yourself, and give, more importantly, Caitlin, Carly, and the crew a huge round of applause. So let's drink some beer. ASV 44, that's a wrap.